America's obesity epidemic. A study released last month by the nonprofit National Bureau of Economic Research found that obesity related medical expense costs the United States $168 billion a year, nearly 17% of total medical costs. Where does the money go? Well, tonight we visit an Alabama hospital specially outfitted to accommodate extremely overweight patients. John Donvan has our report. In one of the largest hospital centers in the nation, size matters, just not in the way anybody really wants it to. The size of obese patients who, by their sheer weight and dimension, when they get here, challenge the system. From the teams that handle emergency cases, to them. It takes more of our people to help move the patients if they're not able to move themselves. I mean, just to do basically any kind of invasive procedure, we'll need help. To doctors who need to get breathing tubes into, in this case, an obese trauma victim. It makes it very difficult for us to, to try to find their, more difficult for us to, to try to find their airway. Literally to, to find it because there's so much extra, there's so much fat in the way. That's right. Or even to close his wound. If he were a thinner person and the same thing happened, he probably would have been able to do it all in one operation. But because he's a, a larger person, it made us want to operate on him more than one time. And even in the relative calm of the maternity floor to OBGYNs who have to adapt for moms of a certain size. We also have special instruments in planning when these patients require a cesarean section, you know, even deciding where to make that incision on the abdomen is more problematic. We are at the UAB hospital, that's University of Alabama at Birmingham, certainly among the nation's most modern medical complexes, but it's dealing with a weight problem. It's the patients, also a good number of the hospital staff itself. It is, to be blunt, the neighborhood that UAB is in. How often do these bigger patients come in? Oh, regularly. <laughs> With it being Alabama regular. <laughs> Hospital CEO Michael Waldrum calls it the obesity belt, and Alabama is part of it. Being in the middle of the obesity belt for the country and living through this epidemic, we have a need to provide more services. So just because you have more obese patients. More patients, here. more patients. More patients like Diane Warren, who gave birth to Ariana Grace a few days ago. Well, actually, it wasn't a few days ago. At this point, it had been six days? That's pretty long to stay compared to most women. Is that, again, related to your size? Oh, yes, sir. They had to take extra precautions with me and in everything they did. Deborah Kimberlin was Diane's doctor for the delivery. We were concerned she was developing preeclampsia. Which is? A common um, complication of pregnancy where the blood pressure becomes elevated and it's a condition that if left untreated and unchecked can cause liver dysfunction, kidney dysfunction, seizures, even maternal death. What, what does that have to do with her weight? Obese women are at increased risk for development of preeclampsia, we know that. In addition, Diane also has a history of underlying chronic hypertension or high blood pressure. That Again, preceded related, the pregnancy. To, related to her weight, probably. Most likely related mm -hmm. to her weight, yes. I mean, you want to hear you know, your pregnancy is going to be like everybody else's and you're going to have a healthy baby. What were you told that could happen? I could develop preeclampsia, which I did. Um, she could be stillborn. Um, I might not make it through the C section if I had to have a C section. She might not make it. These are all a consequence of your, of your size. Right, and the high blood pressure. Um, I have a thyroid problem, I think it's everything all mixed together, but yeah, being the size of I am, it, everything contributed to it. How much of the warnings actually came true? The preeclampsia, yeah, I did have. Yeah. Um, other than that, nothing. I mean, we're here. So it's longer stays, but it's also a bigger team needed to assist with the delivery. Particularly when patients are in labor and they have an epidural, for instance, they're, you know, they can't assist in movement in the same way, so it takes an increased number of how many people? Like four her. or five people? We had four surgeons in Diane's surgery. We had three anesthesiologists, two scrub techs, uh, you know, but it took all of you pediatric to team. It took, it took about six to eight people to get, her, to get her moved. But let's be clear. At UAB, that honest description of the facts is not intended as a criticism of the patients. If anything, UAB's gone out of its way to make the obese feel comfortable here, investing in oversized beds, designing rooms with plus-size doorways, and this wheelchair, extra large. 
which may not be so obvious until I roll up a standard size chair for comparison. The equipment in those rooms, the beds for instance, compared to the beds we own, we have to rent beds for that patient population. What does that cost and you? It's about 50 percent more per, per bed. But they're the sort of adaptations that make Misty Treadgill and her husband Joe, who are expecting in 14 weeks, feel much more comfortable coming here for her prenatal care than where she used to go. You doing okay today? Yes. The facility that I had chose to use originally, they were really devastating to me. In what way? They didn't have high prospects for her because of her weight. To get pregnant or to, to have a healthy pregnancy? To have a healthy pregnancy, to... To carry a baby yeah. at all or anything. Well, it sounds as though her previous clinic was only telling her the truth because obesity does raise risks in pregnancy, but UAB doesn't deal in stigma or shame even while requiring extra sonograms. Incidentally, a chance for parents to hear their baby's heartbeat, which isn't always possible with a normal stethoscope, when layers of fat muffle the sound. It's not that patients here are never told they should lose weight. In fact, weight modification is Dr. Jamie Ard's specialty. How's the exercise been going at home? Slowly. But like many here, he is careful not to make it about shame. The goal is to lose the weight. A lot of people, unfortunately, avoid medical care because of their weight. They've had a bad encounter with a physician or um, health care provider who didn't understand some of the challenges that they were going through. And so rather than deal with that embarrassment, they just skip the colonoscopy or they skip the screening test that would have prevented some poor outcome down the road. And so they do come, and they do get care, in a place where, yes, size matters, but just not in quite the same way in here as it does on the outside. I'm John Donvan for Nightline in Birmingham, Alabama.